So teaching AI how to do something has been something I've wanted to experiment with for a long time now, but I've never had the opportunity to do so. But with this module at uni, we've experimented with AI and I decided to go for it and give machine learning a go. So starting with the project at uni, I started with a state machine initially. Uh, so the basis of this project was built upon just a state machine of some sheep going around a field and a dog that you can control. Uh, and the sheep will move away from you. But as time was sort of narrowing down, uh, I was running out of time to submit the project. So I thought, you know what, I need to do something a bit out there uh, to try and get a, a decent mark or, you know, just save this project because it wasn't doing very well. It was taking me a long time to go through the labs uh, of all these different types of technique. And I was struggling a little bit. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to go for it, try something a bit out there and just attempt machine learning. So to get into machine learning, I needed a good tutorial to get me started. Luckily, there was one provided by the uni that was very good, very detailed, and took me through the whole process of machine learning and getting started. It takes you through the process of training a hummingbird to go around and collect nectar from flowers. I managed to get this working, and I managed to learn quite a lot on the process of how to set up machine learning and watching it progress over time. I'll do a little technical segment at the end if anyone is interested in how to set it up. Not like full detail on how to set it up, but like sort of just the general outlook and the process and I'll go through some scripts and some functions that may be useful and setting it up in the inspector and stuff like that. So if you're interested in how it all works, uh, please stick around to the end or just skip to that segment now. I'll go over all of that. So yeah, now for the interesting part, watching the dog learn over time and seeing its progression. This is what intrigued me about machine learning in the first place, watching something go from not having a clue what it's doing to then completing a task quite efficiently over and over again. I think it's probably one of the most interesting parts of our AI and it's something I'm definitely going to revisit in the future. So yeah, not going into detail as much, I'll leave that to the end. I got the foundation of the Hummingbird Lab and implemented it into my project. Hummingbirds, dog training for herding sheep is completely different, two completely different tasks. So it was a challenge trying to implement the logic for, for my code and to make, you know, the dog work, you know. Um, after some trial and error, you know, I decided to just throw the dog in and to see what it does, to, uh, write in a few lines of code, some, some conditions, some rewards to give it and to see how it reacts. So yeah, as you'll see from the, the clips down below, the dog is sort of just like moving off into the corner, running into walls, and it's pretty overwhelmed with what to do. How machine learning works in general, just a, a little quick overview, is that you give uh, the agent a reward when it does something good, and you give it a negative reward when it does something bad. And you give it the ability to sort of observe the space around it using sensors, and you give it the ability to take what it's observed and then take action on it. So pretty much you can imagine from the dog's point of view it's observing everything around it all these sheep all these walls it doesn't know what the hell it's doing you know so it's probably got a little bit overwhelmed so after leaving it for a little bit hoping that it would sort of figure everything out it didn't and uh it just sort of ended up running into walls over and over again and it just wasn't working very well so after some thinking i decided to just isolate the dog and one sheep and give it a reward every time it just moved towards the sheep just to break down the task a little bit because as you can imagine, all them sheep, very overwhelming. So let's isolate it and let's just make it do one simple task, which is just head towards the sheep. And with this, I started to see results quite quickly because it's a simple task and the dog, you know, gets the reward instantly because it can already see the sheep in front of it and it just observes and it goes towards the sheep because it gets a reward for it. And as you'll notice throughout the clips, the sheep tends to uh, go out of the walls, go outside of the, the, the bounds. So I fixed this by just sort of like cheesing it a little bit. I just added more force that way to counteract the, the dog's force. So it doesn't really look the greatest, but it works. So the dog, so the sheep doesn't go out of bounds anymore. So as you'll see, the progress of the dog now is he's, he's sort of heading towards the sheep. He's, he's, he's managing to get them into the pen. And I thought it was time, you know, to add a few more to see how it reacts. So how the dog would detect the sheep is through like a sphere collider. So it has a radius on how, how it can see sheep. So what it's doing is finding the nearest sheep to it. And then it's following that sheep and it's doing something with that sheep. So as you'll notice throughout the videos as well, um, I'm resetting the dog's position as well. So when it get, it will get stuck and it will get reset. That's called like a, an episode, every episode. So it, basically it has a maximum steps that it will take and then it will reset right so you can you can reset the transform the position of it just to basically where when it does something wrong okay reset do it again you know it gives it another opportunity to try again and surprisingly the dog actually reacted very well to more sheep so after like a couple of hours the dog was actually managing to get sheep into the pen like quite consistently and i was like wow th these are actually working now after adding like some more rewards so 
I use the dot product quite a lot in this to sort of say if it's in line with the, the sheep, if the dog's in line with like, the direction of the sheep, then give it a reward. Uh, and if the velocity of the dog is heading towards the sheep and the forward direction is heading towards the sheep, give it more rewards. I know that's quite a bit, but it's basically just encouraging the dog to, you know, move towards the sheep a little bit more efficiently and give it a reward if the sheep is in line with the uh, the pen and heading towards it as well. Giving it like more rewards like this, you can, you can see the natural progression of it. You shouldn't really give the agent too many rewards at the beginning because it might get overwhelmed so breaking it down like this was definitely very useful so yeah finally what you'll see is that the dog has about seven sheep to work with now and it is actually moving and herding these sheep quite efficiently and we have the timer in the top right as well which is saying like look this is how long the dog has currently taken to herd these sheep and when all the sheep are herded it resets the timers and we have the previous time and we have the best time so we can see how fast the dog has herded the sheep so yeah, from the very first clip, which we have here, which is the dog going into a corner, getting really overwhelmed, to now the latest clip of it literally herding sheep after sheep, I think it's it's quite it's it's really cool and interesting to watch. I think I think the machine learning is awesome, and I'm definitely need to learn a lot more about it. Like, and it's just like a this massive thing that is so cool, and uh, yeah. I really want to learn more about it and get into it properly. The process was quite complicated and it's definitely something that I need to study more and, you know, try and understand more. So I feel more confident doing more projects and experimenting with it a little bit more. So yeah, let's move on to the sort of technical breakdown uh, for the people that are interested in how it actually, how it works. So my sort of, my plan for this is not to go like, too deep into the whole process because because this video will be about 10 minutes long and i don't want to dive deep into the every step of how i did it so i'm just pretty much going to break down the the script and dogs the dog uh, machine learning script and some inspector elements as well so you get to see how it all sort of works and you can export the model as well once you've trained the dog you can then export your the, the brain will be in a folder pretty much <laughs> his brain will be in a folder and uh you can drag and drop it into the project and drag and drop it into this model section in the inspector and then that will be your trained dog i'll link the tutorial as well which will go through that also but yeah that's just exporting its brain and then you can press play in the in unity and you'll see the dog just it will, it'll be a lot slower because you're not training anymore it's no longer in 20 times speed so it would just be like the dog just trying to herd sheep very slowly but really it's in normal time and depending on how long you've left your dog to train uh the faster it'll be so i'm going to start with the inspector first as well so Pretty much once you've downloaded the package, you'll have uh, an agent script as well that you'll inherit your script from. You'll get a script pop up automatically once you drag and drop a script on that inherits from the agent script. So for example, my dog machine learning script inherits from agent. When I drag and dropped it onto the, the dog, the script automatically pops up called behavior parameters. And here the behavior name is very important. If you watch the tutorial and go through the Unity tutorial, it will explain this a lot better. But basically there's something called a YAML file. That's how it's brain works and you need to be it needs to be the same name so it knows what unity project you're sort of using it with because you have to use an external tool called anaconda to sort of run the training again it'll be all be in tutorial in a lot more detail but that's pretty much the gist of it and basically you have the observations here so how many observations it's going to be making observations are basically a little breakdown how you can actually count the observations so how many how do you know how many observations the dog's taking so pretty much a vector three for example it has three components the x y and z right so that would be three observations so you would count that and you need to make sure they're all the same amount otherwise it will bug out i've experienced that many a times now it's uh it's ruined my project pretty much i've not counted the observations which is very important it's basically so the dog doesn't get overwhelmed again so you're only taking in relevant information and another example of an observation would be the dot product, which is a, a scalar, right? So it's only one value you're getting back. So that will be one observation. So yeah, that's pretty much how you would count them. And finally, for the inspector, until we go into the script, the decision requester. So this is super important for the dog to actually make decisions, right? So uh, he needs to be able to, you need to make sure you add this on as well. So you have to add it manually. But once you've installed the, the machine learning package, this will be there for your use. So yeah, let's break let's break down the code and then I'll end the video there. So the first function would be initialize. So this is what happens. It's basically like the start functions when training starts. This is what's going to happen. This is where we just find the rigid body and all, you know all get in the get the components and stuff like that. And then on episode begin, which is something that I mentioned earlier about an episode beginning, which is where you can reset the position and stuff. Uh, I don't do it here because I've trained my dog up to stay longer and do more actions. 
without sort of resetting a lot. Okay, so on action received is one of the most important functions because this is where the dog will actually take action. So for example, we ha it gives basically the dog access to movements. So it allows it to use forward and backward movement. So for example, it uses zero, one, two, three, and four to sort of give each movement uh, direction a code. So for example, forward would be zero, backwards would be one, uh, left, right would be two or three. So yeah, it basically gives the dog the ability to move. And in order to decide what the dog wants to do he needs to obviously observe so um, as he's observing he's then deciding what action he wants to take and that is how he takes them uh, via that function collecting observations is how the dog observes and i went over this how you would calculate how many observations he's making that's basically what this is basically what the function looks like and then we have a like reward system down here for finding the nearest sheep so when we found a nearest sheep then this is where we give all the reward you can see uh, add reward and you give it a slight increase when it does something good and then negative reward when it does something bad and then quickly we have the sheep agent which is uh, basically just a state machine uh, and when it goes into a pen we change its state to the finished state stuff like that so this is just how a state machine works also and when we collide with the goal we give the dog a reward from here as well so uh, it knows when it gets a sheep in a pen it gets a big reward so do it again pretty much so yeah hopefully i've covered everything there yeah it's been awesome learning this uh, and i'm definitely gonna revisit this in the future and yeah if you're interested and want to talk about it please join my discord uh, i'm trying to be a little bit active in there don't really get chance to talk in there much to be fair i'm not very uh sociable but uh, <laughs> you can follow me on tiktok and other socials in the description as well remember the tutorials in the description also and finally if you enjoyed the video please drop it a like and consider subscribing thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one